Greetings today from David Gillespie with Pumpkin Town Primitives. Today we will examine an original 18th century shoe buckle and try to find out more about it. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get more videos just like this. So all the reference material that we'll use today comes from the United Kingdom Detector Finds Database. Thousands of shoe buckles were made in Birmingham, England uh, in the 18th century. I think I read that somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half million pairs were produced there every year. This buckle could have been made in the United States, but probably was made in England in the 18th century. So we know we have a shoe buckle made somewhere in the 18th century. 1700 to 1799. So we'll start out with terminology. The outermost portion of the shoe buckle is called the frame. This section here is called the, uh, the tongue or the fork. And then this is the shape back here, which has the tines. This is the pin that goes down through the center here of the shape. Here's a view of the back of the buckle where you can see the pin, uh, you can see where the pin would go through into the frame there. So it's obvious at first glance that this shoe buckle looks like it's made of silver, but if you flip it over, you can see that it actually is not. It's made of copper and it has been silver plated as you can see there. So according to the database, the uh, process for silver plating uh, was introduced after the year 1742. So that immediately dates our um, buckle to after 1742. And then next we'll notice that the, um, the tongue and the shape are made of steel. So there's a rust patina on that. So it's unfortunate that a lot of the shoe buckles that are found in archeological digs, usually uh, if they do include this Part, they're extremely rusted but in many cases this part here is completely rusted away into oblivion and all that's left is an outer frame this part usually is missing so this one is a non dug specimen so the database next shows that this uh, this stamping here uh, this is called bright cut this area here and this is made to look like facets so this stamping machine or stamping technique uh, according to the database wasn't really um, wasn't really known until after the year 1769 so now based on the um, the stamping used in the surface of the buckle we know we can date it after 1769 So also according to the database, the, um, the bright cut, which is shown here, and this, uh, these tiny facets just from a decoration standpoint, really was in use and in vogue in, from the 1770s and up. So based on the decoration, we know that it dates somewhere after 17. 70 or in the 70s. I was hoping to find a hallmark of some sort on the buckle, but because the buckle is basically a cheap buckle made of copper and not enough silver to warrant a hallmark, there's no hallmark that I can find on it. So next we'll examine it according to its, uh, its length. So here's an 18th century ruler uh, by my friend Rudy McKinney. And as you can see, 
uh, we're at two and a half, about two and five eighths inches long. So according to the database, uh, the rectangular buckles were in vogue in the 1760s. They were about two and a half inches, but by the 1770s, they grew up to about four inches. So they were much larger. Uh, they could be up to seven, up to four inches long in the 1770s. So this one would date just based on its size, uh, likely from the 1770s as well. So now we also know that based on the length of the buckle, it also points to dating after the 1770s. Next, according to the database, the tongue itself being double pronged and having this support uh, piece in between and this shape, the whole package is where this section here dates it according to the database after the 17, in the 1770s, but not much later. So it says 1770s, but likely not much later. Also, based on the shape and tongue, we know that it is likely also after the 1770s. This style of buckle is called an Artois shoe buckle, named after the Count de Artois, who was the French ambassador to England, and he introduced this style of a shoe buckle into England, uh, likely in the 1770s. So that style is basically a, a rectangular shape. So that seems to be more popular after the 17, in and after the 1770s, and up through the 1790s. The Artois shoe buckle basically is a large rectangular buckle that has a high arch. So as you can see, this meets both of those requirements. That is a fairly large arch, and the shoe buckle is getting into the larger sizes. And lastly, based on the style of buckle, it dates from the 1770s up through the 1790s. But because we know the French Revolution came around 1789, we know that by 1790, these fancy style of shoe buckles were going out of fashion. So we know it doesn't date to after 1790. So it dates somewhere between 1770 and 1790. Based on the description about the tongue and shape, it says that the all steel type of uh, the tongue and shape would not have likely gone much after the 1770s. So we can refine it down to 1770s to 1780. So with a conservative estimation, we can somewhat attribute the date of this buckle to the year 1775. So based on our cursory study of this um, shoe buckle from the 18th century, <clears throat> we see that we can call this an Artois rectangular buckle. It's possibly of Birmingham, England manufacture. That it's a copper frame with steel fork or steel tongue in shape and has a silver plated frame. It is likely a common or mid-range, low mid-grade shoe buckle, and its date is circa 1775. So I think that that gives us some ballpark idea. I don't claim to be um, a genius on 18th century shoe buckles, but I think that that is at least somewhat in the range of um, reasonability. If you know any more information about 18th century shoe buckles or about this one or any of its um, facets, please comment below and I would love to hear from you. Uh, I just thought this was a great way to, to show an original piece to give more uh, introspective study for our 18th century impressions. Thank you so much for watching.